so let me introduce Penny Lane Crow. Uh, Penny and I were introduced uh, about a year ago, and she hired me to do some SEO consulting, and she was one of my favorite clients, my favorite type of client, which is a small business person who is very coachable and very motivated. Mm -hmm. And so I saw Penny come and just do a few sessions with me, really not much, and go out and figure out how to take her business QuickBooks now to be able to have a better website and get to the top of Google. And the reason that I've asked her to come back is because she's an ideal case study. She's done this on her own. She is the marketing department for QuickBooks now. And she found the best keywords. She worked to build links and has continued to work on lots of things to try to improve the website over time. Uh, so I really want to um, thank you for coming because it's something that uh, I want to also put this out there that every third month I'd like to do a case study. So of people who are doing online marketing and have success, I think it's really important for us not only to have expert speakers like Dave Pollaby, who is here in affiliate marketing, who is so fast and so expert, but also being able to see someone like Penny, who is not a professional speaker, but she is a professional business person and can show a lot of what she's done directly. So I think that for all of us as small business people, to see somebody else, both from the motivation and the information side, is going to be really good. So there okay. you go. Thank you. Right. That. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for being here. I'm really excited to meet everyone. It's a dynamic group and I admit that I've had trouble getting a seat at the presentations. Usually it's completely full. As Corian and Mason mentioned, I am not a professional online marketing guru. I'm, I actually knew almost nothing about online marketing until I launched my product in <coughs> October of 2010. QuickBooks now. And that's when I got together with Corian and learned some of the techniques that I'm going to share with you today that have been successful for me in getting traffic to my site. I, um, I have two businesses. I have uh, Penny Lane's QuickBooks now. Penny Lane is my real name. And it was named after the Beatles song. <laughs> so you probably know how old I am right now. <laughs> but I also have a, a bookkeeping and accounting business here in town that I've had for a long time called Business Matters. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about my business at the end of the presentation. Most of you are aware that QuickBooks is the number one small business accounting software. And it's used by most small businesses in the United States. Through my bookkeeping business, it, business, I noticed that a lot of small businesses really didn't have the information that they needed <coughs> about their business financially. And a lot of times the problem was <coughs> a lack, sometimes it was a lack of understanding their financial statements, but oftentimes it was just bad information they were getting out of QuickBooks because of their lack of understanding how to use it or their bookkeepers lack of understanding of how to use it. So if, you, if you're looking at things that don't make any sense, it's pretty hard to understand your business financially. Going forward in my business, in my bookkeeping and in my consulting, I started to provide more and more one-on-one -on -one training, classes, workshops, things like that. But I, I really thought there was a better way for people to learn is with today's technology because live classes are really popular everyone says I want to take a class however my feedback from people about live classes is a it's difficult to get to when I've had live classes I have trouble with people even though they begged me to do it even showing up because schedules and things get in the way people are busy and I've also had a lot of feedback about the quality People saying, I spent eight hours, I spent $250, and it was terrible. The person didn't even know what they were talking about. I didn't learn anything. So that's pretty tough because you take a lot of time out of your day to attend a class, and you can't necessarily fast forward through the class. I mean, there you are, right? You're stuck in it. They're talking about something you don't, you don't care about. Too bad. You're stuck there. Um, there are many books, of course, to help people learn how to use QuickBooks and software in general. I have 
use books to learn software. In fact, I really had to use a book to learn the software that I use to create the program, which is really ironic. They don't have interactive tutorials for the product that creates interactive tutorials. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty weird. But I use the book, and it, it's rough, because you're looking at this, you're reading, you're doing screenshot, you're going back to the screen. You're, it's just not efficient to me. It's not efficient. Um, there are also video tutorials on the market. Most of them are a watch and learn video tutorial. So you turn it on, you watch it, some, you watch what somebody's doing. But most people, myself particularly, I learn much better by doing. I don't learn very well just by watching someone else do it. So if you learn that way, you watch the tutorial, you're generally going to pause it, you're going to go over to your computer, hopefully you have cookbooks on your computer, and then you're going to play around with it and see how it works for you in order to help you retain that information. And I didn't really like, particularly, think any of these were fantastic. The tutorials, I think, are the best. But again, I, I really thought there, there was a better way. And that's when I set forth to create QuickBooks Now. It is a video <coughs> tutorial, but it's totally interactive. So you're not watching me perform the tasks. I'm explaining to you what tasks you'll be performing and why and what's behind it. And then you're actually doing the work. You're actually working in the program. So I say, click here. Do this, do that. You're actually doing all of the work, which I think is far and away more efficient than watching and then doing, looking at a book and then doing. You're learning it all in one easy step. I also wanted it to be available right away because I'm very impatient. And if I learn, if I want to learn how to do something, and why not in today's world? Why shouldn't I be able to just say, yes, I want this. I would like to start learning this right now. I don't want to have to schedule it. Um, and so I also have made it available to stream online so you can use it right away as soon as you buy. Um, and again, it's completely interactive. And the instruction that I give is very practical and it's based on my experience, my experience doing bookkeeping for a lot of different businesses you know, dozens and dozens of different businesses and different types, and also my experience training dozens of people how to use it and the types of questions that they ask, and the types of things that are really not clear and frankly not intuitive in the product. Um, uh, the only other online tutorial that I'm aware of, well, actually not online, the only other QuickBooks tutorial I'm aware of that is interactive is by Real World Training, which starts at almost $400. And it's not available online. Uh, you have to you know, buy it and then they send you a seat. So that's why I created this product, to make it easier for people to learn how to use QuickBooks. OK, so I know nothing about online marketing, but I realize that I have created an online product. Clearly, I will need to attract traffic to my website if I'm to sell it, if anyone's going to know about it. And this was a complete mystery to me. I, I read a few books. I, of course, studied online, like often we'll Google things, online marketing, website traffic, SEO. And frankly, the information was totally overwhelming to me. I could not, I could not figure out what to do. I, I did get some good ideas. But that's when I contacted Corian, who um, taught me the techniques that I'm going to share with you today. The, the very first thing that we started with was keyword research. And we're all familiar with how Google works. You're looking for something online. This seems like kind of a no-brainer, so you type it in, and you say QuickBooks Training. And Hopefully, you'll pull up sites that are relevant to QuickBooks training. But how do I get my site, and how do I know what terms people are searching to look for some, for my type of product? I had some ideas. I, I thought QuickBooks tutorial, QuickBooks tutorials, those are good keywords. But what I learned from Corian was how to use the 
Google keyword search tool, which I'm going to pull up for you now. You'll have to excuse this part of it, it might be a little awkward. Okay. Okay, so here's the keyword tool. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but you type in a word or a phrase and I'm going to press exact. There are a lot of <coughs> options on here, um, but it will give you the related searches that people have have used to search for that search for that keyword. So it gives you alternative ideas, it gives you more ideas. What else besides QuickBooks tutorials? They're searching for QuickBooks tutorials. What else might they be searching for? Uh, some of the things that I learned were, um, why is it not working, Corey? Uh, search. A couple things. Uh, <laughs> we've got broad matches, check two. And this is actually a good teaching example because right. Penny has not been doing keyword research anytime recently. She did this as a big bunch. And then under local monthly searches, you might want to sort by that so the ones that are searched the most go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And now we're getting into specifically how people search with keywords related to that. If you want to limit it to just QuickBooks, then you can check the box at the top. But there we see QuickBooks tutorial or some other okay. related things. So, again, I, I'm not an expert and I haven't used this tool for a while, but it gave me ideas of how, what other terms I might want to use in my content and whatnot, what keywords I might prize above others. And through doing this research, we came up with this keyword list here, and these <coughs> are the keywords that we identified as being higher on the list, more searches, so on and so forth, um, to help me design the rest of my marketing around these keywords, which I'm going to talk about now. Recently, we did a keyword search and noticed that how to had come up, and that wasn't something that I had found before, because this is really an ongoing project. This is not something that I'm finished with. So we, you can see that there's quite a few monthly searches how to use QuickBooks. So that gives me an additional idea of, of a keyword or a key phrase that I hadn't used before in my keyword um, marketing efforts. So one of the, the ways that you can use keywords is obviously you use them in, in your content so that Google knows what you're about. You're about QuickBooks training, you're about QuickBooks tutorials, you're about Learn QuickBooks, so that Google knows, well, this is what your page is about, so it will send people there. So you, I use these terms in the content on my pages. And specifically, I'll choose certain pages and I'll zero in on one <coughs> keyword and I'll use it a lot. There's a careful balance between using your keywords and your content and making your content relevant and easy to read. I also try to make my copies scannable by bolding certain areas. Excuse me, just a minute. Can you turn off this yeah. of oh. Well, that's a concept. Thank, Thank you. you for that. <laughs> Okay. okay. Can everybody see this okay? <coughs> so here I've used QuickBooks training a lot. I use it a whole bunch of times in my QuickBooks training, QuickBooks training. I use it in my page title and everything. So that it gives me an opportunity to really highlight that phrase. But in general, when I'm writing my copy, I, I find myself automatically using keywords whenever I can. If I can say it in a different way, that will let me use one of my keywords, or one of my top keywords, which is QuickBooks tutorial and learn QuickBooks, um, then I do. And also, I use things like QuickBooks tutorials, because that's another way that people will search for QuickBooks tutorial, which is what I found out by using the keyword research tool. 
Um, okay, so I use them in my content. I also installed an SEO plugin on my WordPress page. The one I installed is from Yoast. I'm not saying it's the best one, but it gives me the opportunity to customize my page title, my meta description, and adds meta tags to my pages. You'll notice that I've made the title here um, Quick Books <coughs> Training. So again, I've used the term Quick Books Training for this particular page because this was a keyword page that is focusing on training. But I'd like to get some more traffic for Link building. I learned also from Corian that Google really likes links to your page, incoming, outgoing, and internal links. How to, how to get links. One of the ways to get incoming links, I learned, is directories. There are a lot of online directories. And I felt pretty overwhelmed by this whole link thing, to be honest. It seems, it seemed crazy. When we did research on my, on my competitors, I would see that they had 1,800 links and thousands of links, and I went, oh my gosh, how am I going to get thousands of links? I'm never going to get thousands of links. Uh, but it's one of these projects that you need to, that I found if I just put my nose to the grindstone and did my research that Corian taught me and went out there and spent some somewhat tedious time doing it, uh, I could definitely get links. Uh, the first thing that I did was I used a tool that's not available now, it's called Yahoo Site Explorer, and Corian's given me some alternatives now, Gleco.com, LinkBuilder, WordTracker.com, and OpenSiteExplorer.org. With this tool, I was able to see the links that were coming in to my competitor site. So I went to a real world training site and I said, well, what, what incoming links do they have? Where are they coming from? And that was incredibly helpful. I looked at the list and it gave me a lot of ideas. A lot of them were directories, but I could see that they were, they were good links. So I would go to, I would see where they got the link from, I would go there, I would get a link there too. And there are a lot of directories where you can put some pretty detailed information. You can put pictures, you can put your products. I spent a lot of time doing <coughs> link building this way. But when I say a lot of time, it was, it was mainly for a concentrated period of time. What is an incoming link? <coughs> an incoming link would be if I had a link on my site that linked to your site. That would be an incoming link for you and an outgoing link for me. So, Google likes this because... It's boats. The boats. idea is if you have a website out there that is linked from a lot of other quality websites, you're building a reputation and you're saying, Google, my website is important. Right. People are linking to the voting. Right. So, um, and that, that would be the, the incoming links. Those are the most in, strongest. Most the, important the by far. So I really focused on incoming links. Of course, I have outgoing links on my site as well, practical resources for my clients and so forth. <clears throat> but the incoming links are the tricky. So I went to all of these places where my competitors had were listed on directories. There were um, also education sites, was something I hadn't really thought of. There are sites that promote education, so I went to many of those. I was able to get listings, mostly for free. I, I probably paid a total of, I'll say $300 for really strong links and for one person to do this, this project where a company that did a project where they sort of got me a whole bunch of links at once, which was, was fairly effective. So I have links on things like Manta.com, HotFrog.com, Syrac Syracuse Deals. I never would have known about that if I hadn't researched my competitors' keywords. It was just this odd thing that, that came up on there. Hey, Penny, real quick, when you're looking at your competitors, 
how do you find out what links are going to them? You use the <coughs> online tool, and I, I would love to demonstrate it for you, but like I said, the, the one that I used isn't available anymore, and I don't really know how to use <coughs> these ones, but if you go to these tools, and I'm sure you'll have links to them on the meetup site, you can just go straight to it and say, I want to see links on such and such website. I'm in the trenches on this, so uh, Bleco is free, uh, so that's the one to start with if you want to just uh, play around with it. Linkbuilder.wordtracker.com is the most powerful one. It's got a free trial for 30 days, uh, and it's $100 a month after that. If you are getting started with this stuff, a lot of times you can go in and do some research on your competitors' links and then download those, and you don't have to necessarily have the service beyond a month or two. Open Site Explorer is also another paid service that has a small free trial that's available. And what you get essentially is a spreadsheet saying for this website, here's the places, just a big spreadsheet of all the places that link, and then it's just a matter of doing detective work to look at those pages, are they appropriate for your website, can I get a link there, is it paid, is it free, how much information can I include there, and in some cases forums and social stuff. For the most part, this was a pretty concentrated effort. It's not something that I spend a lot of time on now. It was an upfront concentrated effort. Get as many links as I can. I also discovered, I already knew before I started marketing my product about answering questions on forums and things like that. And in my particular business, the most powerful and the most common is the community.intuit.com. It's basically the QuickBooks Intuit community. In fact, when you're in, when you're in the QuickBooks software, there's a sidebar that has a, a place where you can just ask a question right now. So there are thousands, every, every second there are questions, questions, questions from QuickBooks users about how to use QuickBooks. And I was aware of this as a marketing tool in the fact that when I answer someone's question, that answer stays out there forever. So when people come back to the forum, if they just do sort of a search, um, accrual-based accounting, what have you, they, it may pop up with my answer. What I learned from a link standpoint is that QuickBooks, the Intuit site, is a very powerful site with a lot of link juice. And every time that I post an answer to someone's question, my site gets a link. And sometimes, too, if I can reference back to a blog article that I've written that's relevant to the person's question. And answering these questions is, it's not a place to self-promote. It's a place to help people. And, um, I also do it on LinkedIn and QuickBooks.com users forums. Any type of expert, um, you know, it may not apply to every business, but as positioning myself as an expert, it's an excellent marketing tool for me and it's an excellent way to get powerful links back to my site. And I believe that this is the number one marketing tool for my business and it is the number one way that I have gotten where I am as far as my, my Google status. In fact, within a couple of months, I had my answers. Sometimes I would appear on the first page of Google, maybe second organic listing down an article or, or a question that I had answered on the Intuit website. It would just pop up there. It wouldn't stay there forever, but I was like, wow, that's amazing. And so people would go, uh, Google learn QuickBooks, and I would be right there on the front after just having my site up for a couple months based on uh, answering that question. Here is an example of a question that I answered that has been viewed, this was in June of 11, uh, as of a couple days ago it had been viewed 1,026 times. So that's just one answer and it just takes me a few minutes, sometimes a minute or less to answer someone's question. Um, and I believe, again, I believe that this has been very powerful in bringing me ranking and links to my site. I also post my blog articles on several sites. Again, you're getting links and also you're increasing 
your chances of people finding your content. Um, using articles, I've had people, a few people directly contact me actually through using articles. Uh, USBusinessForums.com, eHow.com, Blogger. I post my blog on all of the, my good articles on all those sites. Um, I also have a Facebook page. I have a YouTube channel where I post demo videos. I also answer questions on Yahoo Answers. Um, and I have a Google blog alert for QuickBooks, which hasn't been as powerful lately. I don't get too much back on that. But it'll alert me to someone else's blog article that they may have written that I can go and comment on. Again, getting a link back to my site. Um, if anyone else should read that person's article, they might come across me talking about something and see my site and go, I wonder what that is. Tracking results. Where am I on that time? Okay. I had a question before yes. you leave the, the blogging uh, that you're answering. Mm -hmm. um, when you put your, when you answer somebody, you, you put a link in there as, as <coughs> Sometimes I will link directly back to one of my blog articles. So if someone is asking a question about cash versus accrual-based accounting, for instance, or taking customer deposits, I've written really good articles about that, so I can put that in there. But every time that I answer a question, it automatically creates a link on these sites because my um, my web address so is web attached address to it. Is mm -hmm. Attached to the answer. Yeah, and the, and that's how they the ones that I've posted on anyway are set up. I also do I do LinkedIn. I answer questions on LinkedIn, um, and I ask questions on LinkedIn, too. and I'm in groups. So how do you answer? How do you filter down the answers? filter down the questions, I guess, that you need to answer on something like Yahoo or LinkedIn? Yahoo or Answers, you sign up and uh, for a certain expertise, okay. and I did the keyword of QuickBooks, so they will actually email me any new questions that come out for QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. The Intuit site, you can go on it and you can search different areas where you might have expertise. It's so fast, this particular one is so fast that I actually... It's more of an in-the-moment in thing. You just I go on there and check and see if there's anything that I feel like answering or that I would be really helpful to someone. Mm -hmm. um, because by the time you go and search it out, 10 people have already answered it. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they may not have the best answer. They may not have the best answer. <laughs> I, I, have, I have answered questions that people have already answered, too. If I see something particularly relevant um, there's some certain hot spots for me uh, with QuickBooks that a lot of people struggle with that I have articles and so on. All right, any other questions about that? Um, Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools are the main way that I use for tracking my results. And again, I'm not... I don't have hours and hours to spend on this every day, but it's really important to my business. And I'm not super sophisticated, and I don't want to spend, I don't have the time to, to learn to be an expert, as, as expert as Corian is. I just have my level that I, that I have time to do with. And so these are the two tools that I use. Um, Google Analytics, this is an example of the, the overview of the traffic to my site. So Can you read, because it's hard to read those, can you read some of the keywords that people are searching for that they're finding you on? Right, so right here is, first of all, this is sort of a graph monthly. This starts in June of 11 and goes to January of 12. So you can see that I've had a gradual uptick. Recently, I've had Really, since January, I've had a really steady increase in my traffic, almost double over previous. So for 11, it was kind of ambled along, getting a little better. Uh, recently, I have 
I used to have maybe 40, 50, 60 people. Now I'll regularly have 150, 200 people at my site every day. So it just seems like all of a sudden, all this work and all this time <coughs> is starting to really pay off. Do you, do you think that some of that could be related to tax season? Some of it is seasonal and related to tax season because you can see in January 11, I have more here. But I'll tell you, it's been more consistent and it's been more than what I've had in the past uh, period. Um, so what, anyway, what, what percentage of it is AdWords or is it all? I don't do AdWords at all. Okay. When I first started, I did a burst of AdWords and then I realized that it was too expensive. This is really a work in progress, like I said, for me. And there are uh, issues that I'm still working on. Um, but the Google AdWords really added up and it didn't have good conversion results for me so far. So I just have been going with the, uh, the organic natural traffic. Uh, so some of the keywords that people are using. So here down here is a list of keywords that people are using. Unfortunately, there's a lot of not provided, but QuickBooks tutorial during this period of time is the number one. Uh, learn QuickBooks. Um, QuickBooks tutorial online, QuickBooks training. So you can see that the use of my keywords in my content, my linking, it's all paying off in the result of, of this natural traffic. Um, in fact, I think I have time to, to pull this up live and just show you Can I ask you to, uh, mm -hmm. how many different keyword sets do you have separate pages designed around those keywords? You, you showed a couple uh, where you have picked a keyword and Just done three, a whole page. Just three or four. Three or four. I don't have a lot of pages on my site in general. So so here, um, here it is live. If I just click here, uh, this is the overview, then I can click on traffic sources. So we can see um, during this period of time the keywords. And this is a month that we're looking at. So it is in the middle of the tax season, but right. this is exactly where the thing that I see in that graph she had for a year is the fact that there was a bump. Like she started working with me at the end of 2010, there was a bump around tax season. Now that bump is much bigger this year. There's a lot more people coming. Yeah. That's something that she keeps working that you would anticipate she's going to keep getting higher rankings. And the other thing I see is that the keywords that she's getting rankings on are the ones that she picked. Mm -hmm. She said, learn QuickBooks. I want to be number one on that. QuickBooks tutorial. So she was very specific, and there were lots of things that we didn't go after, like contractor's edition of QuickBooks. We talked about it and said, there's content. She's written about that, but is there enough people? No, let's go after the ones that uh, people search for the most. And so here we can see where my referral source traffic is coming from, the forums.quickbooksuser.com where I post answers um, and must have something particularly interesting to people right now. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of traffic from that one. And also the community into it. And it's been really busy tax season. I haven't been posting a lot of answers on the forum of the community into a forum in the last, I don't know, month maybe, just because I'm so swamped. But like I said, this is not my, something that I can spend hours and hours every day all the time on, but it's something that I need to keep up on and it definitely does bring results. And, and it, I think that there's a certain period of time also that it okay. takes for things to filter. That pie them. chart on the last one, what are those categories? So one was linked, one was referred. Uh, I, I, yeah, we, the search traffic, could re, that's where somebody goes to Google and types in a, 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 a search? Right. And the refer, what's the referral traffic? The referral traffic is what we're looking at here. This is where someone might have saw, seen an answer that I they might have gone to the community .com. They saw where I answered a question, and then from there they visited my site. But those are referral sources. That would be if someone came to my site, they saw a link to your site, and then they went there. And the direct traffic is where they just <coughs> typed in your site directly into a, a as a URL. Right, and then I could, and that's where I click on the keywords 
for the, for the search traffic here, and then I can see the keywords that people used. Unfortunately, there's a big not provided one there, but I can see the keywords that people used to okay. get to my site when they were typing in the search, which, again, is QuickBooks Tutorial, Learn QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks Tutorial Online. And I've very heavily used those keywords in my content. Um, question, not provided. Why is that? Because okay. Google's a jerk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, they changed their policy about six months ago to start trimming back the amount of keyword data that they're handing to mm -hmm. tracking programs like analytics. My experience about uh, it has been traditionally about 10% of the traffic, keyword traffic for, from the search engine would be not provided. I'm now seeing upwards of 25%. So in this case, that's about, it's 339 of 1890, so yeah, it's about 20, 25% overall. Part of that is Google filtering it, which is the largest part. Part of that is the fact that some people may not have their cookies enabled or have got anonymous browsing, so it's gonna prevent that from being tracked. But a big chunk of it is Google saying, we're gonna make SEO harder for you. But at the same time, the statistical trends are there that QuickBooks tutorial is the number one term that she's getting, probably a corresponding percentage of the not provided are going to also be for QuickBooks tutorial. Is there a reason Google, Google's doing that? To ask people to, basically from the search community, they're saying that, that Google is working to push people more into Google AdWords, which by the way, they'll show you full information if you're willing to pay for it from AdWords. <laughs> so it's, it's the reason Google's a multi-billion dollar company is because of all the sponsored search on AdWords and they're being dastardly about working to make it harder for the free stuff and encourage people to pay stuff. And as Penny said, do the free stuff first because that's residual and it can build up over time and she doesn't have to pay for those 1,800 clicks, 1,900 clicks from search sources. And I heard a, a good example of that is it's like owning and renting. Organic is like owning the house. You slowly build equity, but paying AdWords is like renting. As soon as you stop paying Google for those AdWords, they go away. You get, you get evicted. <laughs> but owning is sort of owning and you're building slowly too. building equity in your real estate. I also use this tool. Uh, another thing that I go to a lot, and it's different for different people, different businesses, what your strategies are. But I use this also to look at the content that people have, which pages they go to, where they exit, what pages they're at the most. So on and so forth. Oh, that's a great example showing the tutorial's page itself, not your home page, is what's getting a lot of traffic. So I have like a second page talking about tutorials. Um, and, and this is just quick and easy thing for me to do. I often I just go and I wouldn't say daily, but quite often I just log in there and check it out, see what's going on with my site. And it's helped me make improvements to my site as well. Uh, in, with that tool, you can see where people would be missing the exiting and, and whatnot. For the more of a close-up page of this period of time, and what my sources were as far as the search traffic, Google, Yahoo, Bing. You see Google organic traffic, so that's the free traffic, mm -hmm. compared to Yahoo organic, which is number three on there. Google's way, way bigger than Yahoo. And then Bing is the next one down from there. So we focus on Google. Um, okay, so now we get to the Google Webmaster Tools, which is where I can see the incoming links to my site. Because I have 1,800 now. Yeah. I started out with none. Um, and you can see that most of them come from Intuit. I don't know exactly what these numbers mean here, but... It's the total number of links from that domain. I feel like I should have more than that, but in any case... The ones case, that Google finds. Right, okay. So these are... These are the most common sites. I'm not sure actually why the union is here like this, but I think did them. you write articles on that? I, I have been in the union. I did have an article in the union. Um, 
again, the intuit.com where I do all of my posting and answering people's questions and cookbooksusers.com. I answer a lot of questions. Nevada County Biz, that's my business matters website, my bookkeeping business. Um, and here is the most linked content, my homepage and the tutorials page. And this is a really popular article that I wrote that was actually published on Intuit's Little Square, <coughs> one of their pages. They posted. Could you show us the Webmaster Tools Live for the search queries? Yes. Because that's, for me, one of the things that I really track and it's also most compelling about um, what you can see. Okay. So, under the left hand side, your site on the web search queries. And then you can click on with change in the, right above the, it's at the very bottom of the screen. It says basic and then with change. Oh, no, I'm uh, yeah. oh, right. So this is one of the reasons that I ask Penny to come and do this presentation is because this is she is, shares this access with me. If you look on the right hand side with average position, that's showing her average search position in Google. Just you know, Google is very customized. So if you're searching from one area versus another, or if you're logged in versus not logged in, you're going to see different results. But this is where She's, if you notice, there's a lot of single digits there. So these car target keywords, a lot of them are in the top 10, which is the first step, and now our next step is to get them pushed up even higher. She'll also see that, largely because of tax season, she's seen the impressions and the clicks have gone up a lot recently. But this is one of the easier tools to say, all right, I should see my rankings going up over time, I should see my traffic going up over time, and they're connected. The higher ranking you get, the more people will see you and the more people will click. Like, what does accrual mean? It's a great example where she wrote content on people ask questions to Google now. So being aware of what exactly people were asking, she wrote an article talking about what does accrual mean. And that means that when people search for that, they find her in the top ten with a very specific article. I love it? this chart. I want to see this for lots of my clients. <laughs> Penny, how do you find the questions that um, people are asking on Google? Uh, the questions that I answer, I find them on Intuit.com, the makers of QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very specific and very simple. And like I said, they have an in-product area where they, you directly, there's a box that says, ask your question here. You type it in and you go immediately to the Intuit community. I don't, and, and, and with the Yahoo, I specifically signed up to answer those questions. With LinkedIn, I've joined a lot of groups, and then I get e emails, to the, what do you call it? A summary type email that says, these are the questions, and if I see one that I have a good answer to, I will go and answer that question. And that's what I get with the, the Yahoo, too. Um, with the QuickBooksUsers.com, I just log in, and there, you know, people are asking questions. It's a very forum-based type thing, and you just, I signed up to be an expert and to answer questions. So whatever industry you're in, that would d dictate where you might find forums related to your industry with questions that you could answer. Uh, but a lot of them I do get with LinkedIn groups, and interestingly, through LinkedIn groups, I've learned, I've learned a lot too. I've learned about um, a program called Radio Free QuickBooks. Um, I've sort of hooked up with other QuickBooks experts around the country, where you kind of get to know each other. It's really, it's really nice. It's, I guess that's the whole LinkedIn networking thing. But it's nice also that you can ask and answer questions on LinkedIn. I think that's pretty much <coughs> the end of my presentation. How much time do I have, Frank? Uh, we're doing great on time. So uh, it is 12 o'clock, so if people have questions, maybe we do mm -hmm. 10 minutes of Q&A, and then we'll do the, the raffle, and we'll have a little
the time for networking stuff again. Yeah. Thank you. Um, assuming you have you work with clients as well as uh, your website, mm -hmm. your website's your client. Can you talk a little bit about how you organize your time? Sounds like you spend a lot of it, a lot of upfront time in getting to this point, but there's probably some ongoing management between everything that you do, LinkedIn, maybe keeping up with new keywords. How do you segment your time in, in a physical calendar each week? It varies somewhat because the the accounting side of my business is is has seasonal issues. For instance, right now, it's a really busy time. It's not a time that I spend as much time on SEO, but one of the things that I'll do is I get up pretty early in the morning, So, and I'm just a morning person, so a lot of times I'll go on and just spend, say, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, answering people's questions, doing rewriting a page on my site. It's really something that I that I just fit in. I just like anything else. <laughs> it's not always easy, but and then there are times when I'll spend a concentrated effort when I'll really need to uh, you know, right now I'm really working on my uh, email marketing campaign. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention um, if you go to my site, let me just go to my site real quick. I forgot to mention that I have this place over here where you can sign up for free tutorials. That's uh, one of the marketing efforts that, you know, I had to spend a concentrated amount of time working long hours to get that going. So if you put your name in here, um, that obviously gives me customer leads in my pipeline. I send them some free information and some free tutorials, and then they're they're my pipeline, so I can market to them later and as I grow and create more products. And what what's the nature of that free information that you can send them? Is it just a just a tutorial on a piece of tutorial on QuickBooks? Mm -hmm. so. I'll send the first thing that I send out is a uh, it's a segment. It's actually a segment from my product that displays a really interesting tip that most people don't know about and also gets people familiar with how the how the tutorial how the product works. The second one is again another interesting tip and also references to my most popular article, the one about cash versus accrual accounting, and my tips and tricks <coughs> area, which is my blog with a lot of really good articles. And the third one is an offer to get a discount on my product, and um, I also offer up a little bit of information about me and my background and my story. And then I can send broadcast emails to those people later. But that's been very effective, and since my traffic has increased, I'm getting five to seven people signing up for that. I'd like that to be more, which is part of my ongoing marketing. <laughs> Yeah, really? that are signing uh -huh. up for this. Yeah, or going really to my pipeline. Yeah, yeah and, the, and those are the people that are actually confirming because I have a double opt-in system. So there's actually more people that sign up for it. Not too many, but there's a few that don't double opt-in with the confirmation email. Uh, yes. So now, I mean, I'm up to 200. Not every day, but lately, you know, I've had as much as 200 people. And the previous March, I have not had that many people. I had maybe 40 last March visiting, even with the seasonal. January was big, but after that, um, you know, lately I've been, like I said, I've been having 150 people, 200 people visiting the site. <coughs> so it's been great. When you say double up, the first they enter this one, and there's another. Yes, I use AWeber for my email marketing. And AWeber is a double opt-in system, meaning you put your name here, then you get an email that says, okay, thanks for asking for this information. Now I need you to just confirm that you really want to get this information. And then they have to click through to confirm that they really want to get the information. Mm -hmm. 
how's your conversion? My conversion is not that very good. That's one of the things that I'm still working on, and I think um, my next project, my next marketing project, is to further define my target audience. Um, you can see here that I'm marketing to business owners, bookkeepers. I, I have made the decision to really narrow down my target audience to bookkeepers, so I'm gonna be doing a campaign. Uh, that's my next project. As soon as April 15th <laughs> 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 that I'm going to dive into to hopefully hopefully improve my conversion rate because the conversion your conversion rate can be related to your traffic I don't think that it is in this case it's pretty clear who I want I want people that are looking for QuickBooks tutorials I want people that are looking to learn QuickBooks so I don't think it's related to my online marketing my conversion I think it's related to my marketing and um, you know my lack of being very targeted in my customer. How many times have you changed your home book on uh, your home page to try to tweak to get a better conversion? <laughs> well, I have changed my home page once because my original home page was really beautiful. I paid a uh, graphic designer a lot of money to design this lovely home page for me. The problem with it was I couldn't make any changes to it. <laughs> and, and so I had to have that, I had to take it down. And, go with a standard page that I, with very limited knowledge and understanding of using WordPress, can go in and make changes to whenever I want. Because you need to be able to do that. Do you ever think of doing a specific marketing campaign to bookkeepers and having a landing page direct to that so you could measure? That's what I'm working on now. Um, again, it's my next marketing effort that, I, that I've made the decision somewhat recently, but I haven't had time to implement that yet. That's part of my time management. But it's just a reality of my business and my life. And there's only so many things that I can do at one time. And this is <coughs> just one of them. As a small business owner, I love to get a quick books. Is it better to get a really CD in my hands or just order it online directly? Most people order my product online. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe one out of four or five will also order a CD backup because I do offer it in a CD. But that's your product. Yeah, I think you go meant QuickBooks as a program. Oh, so to look at the QuickBooks program. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. online version is convenient because it's cloud-based, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly as robust at the desktop version and it has some very annoying <coughs> things like one of the great things about the QuickBooks desktop version is you can have multiple windows open at once, you can open a report and then you can go over here and then you can just go back to it. Well, in the online version, if you leave a place, you have to go all the way back in there again. You lost. You have to, uh, what I do to get around that is to open multiple browser windows, but also it can be a little slow, cloud-based. Well, order a physical copy of you, so there's a special link for you to order a copy. Right. Any other questions? Do you act as an affiliate for QuickBooks? Yes, I am actually, uh, I do have an affiliate account with QuickBooks. It's not very exciting. It's a really, really small amount of kickback that you get for selling people. That would be where I would sell QuickBooks to people. So you'll notice that I don't prominently display by QuickBooks from me on anywhere because they throw you a very small bone for that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. When you do your interactive video, that must be very hard to design. Mm, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How do you do it? Well, this is the thing about Having a great product idea is, it took me a couple of years just to create the product. Because in order to create the product, I had to learn the software that creates the product. It's a very time consuming process and um, very challenging to learn a new product and also to learn so many new technologies. I had to learn WordPress, I had to learn SEO and online marketing, uh, marketing in general. It's just, it's quite an undertaking, which I'm sure many of you have experienced in your business. Learning something new. Any other questions? 
Thanks very much, especially for doing it this time of year. <laughs>